In November of 1953, Frank Olson, a civilian scientist that worked at a U.S. Army lab, fell out of a hotel room window in Manhattan and died. His death was classified as an accident until 1975 when the government revealed that Olson was actually part of a secret CIA experiment and had unknowingly been dosed with LSD, to which he allegedly had a bad reaction and ultimately committed suicide. But what if there was more to the story? So believe Frank's sons, Eric, who's been digging into the case for the past 60 years and is the subject of the new Netflix miniseries Wormwood by Errol Morris. Here he is talking to that son's lawyer. Did you have the feeling even at that time that things were being held back? Yes. But it wasn't so evident as it became later on. Something about Eric's father, something about what Eric's father was doing and Fort Dietrich was doing. That's what led Eric on this quest. I'm joined now by the man behind the question in that clip, as well as the whole Wormwood series, Academy Award-winning filmmaker Errol Morris, who was just nominated today for a Director's Guild Award. Congratulations on that, Errol. It's good to see you. I watched this a second time, by the way. It is can't believe you watched it twice. <laughs> twice, I know. So after the You're lucky if someone has watched it once. <laughs> after the Rockefeller Commission thing that I just mentioned, Gerald Ford personally apologizes to the family. Had a president of the United States ever done that kind of thing directly before? Don't think so. You don't get invited into the Oval Office and hear the president apologize for something that the U.S. government has done. But it tur as it turns out, as we learn later in the film, he may have been apologizing for a crime that was actually used to cover up a far more horrific crime. Did he know that, that he may be, have been spinning a tune, a line, when he was doing that? I don't think so. Why do do I know for sure I don't. Why do you think that? Because I like Gerald Ford. Okay, how much do you want to tell? I don't know if you want to do uh, how much you want to give away here. After this LSD thing, which I think a lot of people thought closed the, uh, the case, but not for Eric. Uh, LSD is a red herring. Okay, so what Everyone happened? knows about this case. It's the guy, the government scientist, given LSD surreptitiously, jumps out a window, plunges 13 stories to 7th Avenue. This is in New York City. The Statler, Statler Hotel. Overlooking 1018A, the, I know it very well. Old Pennsylvania State. So what happens? But after the apology, after the Rockefeller Commission, after it allegedly is resolved, this LSD thing, what then do we learn about what the government was really doing here and what is really likely to have happened to Olson? Are you familiar with the term cover-up? I am familiar with the term cover-up. And <laughs> what were they covering up? They're covering up, I believe, you're asking me, a murder. Murder by? The CIA. You know, the, the story, the, the person I think you couldn't take your eyes off, and I know I couldn't take my eyes off, was the son of Frank Olson, Eric Olson. Here he is, by the way, dedicated his whole life to the search for the truth. And I have to say, I, I am obsessed with his obsession. Here's just a little piece of him. You're in a room. You can't jump, you have to dive. The window had this sash in the middle of it. I mean, it was a two-paned window. You would have had to get horizontal to get out this window. I mean, the verb jump no longer was operative. It was either fall or dive. Is it his obsession or government misconduct that was the primary thing that drew you to this? I, I can't get over his, his whole lifetime dedicated to search for the truth here. Does it have to be A or B? No, it doesn't, but I have a feeling it may have been. Was there one that was even more powerful in terms of motivation or no? Look, I'm an obsessed character myself. <laughs> do I so like obsessions? Yes, of course I do. Okay, so there are a lot of big, uh, can I call them cameos along the way? Cy Hirsch, legendary investigative journalist, this Colby, the former head of the CIA, Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld, people may have heard of the two of them. How do the latter two factor into this tale here, Earl Morris? They are in the story from very early on. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld is chief of staff, and Dick Cheney is assistant chief of staff. They're running the Ford White House. And so is, should I read into that that they were the likely perpetrators or at least collaborators in this, this cover-up that was conducted to, to cover up, as you suggested, a CIA murder here? 
I don't know what they knew, but it's hard for me to believe they didn't know something. You know, you've spent a career with a couple of uh, uh, detours along the way, like with the great Elsa Dorfman when you were here with her a couple of uh, months ago with that fabulous film about a fabulous woman, uh, exposing government misconduct, government lying through the years. Are things any better in 2018 than they were with Thin Blue Line or fo any? Are they any better? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I'm asking you. I'm not <laughs> kidding you. I'm asking you. Are they? And if they're worse, well, I assume that means they're worse. Why are they worse? Why have we allowed them to get worse? They're bad. They're very, very bad. Uh, one of the interesting things about Wormwood, for me, as uh, an investigator, years and years ago, I worked as a private investigator. Um, you think that you're dealing with just a chessboard. You're moving the pieces around. You're trying to figure out, did this happen? Did that happen? Does the evidence support this conclusion that I'm trying to reach? Blah, blah, blah. What you don't really think about is as you are investigating a story, there are people actively trying to prevent you from finding things out. There are people that are misdirecting you. There are people lying to you. There are people destroying evidence. But is it possible there's a pogo element in all this through the years, too, that we are part of the enemy here, that we're part of the reason why this lying to the American people by its own government continues apace? Is it possible? possible but why would you want to blame the victim here speaking of victim i want to ask you something that we touched upon when you were at the library with me and marjorie egan the other day quentin tarantino's line after the harvey weinstein thing broke and you weinstein did your movie that the made thin you blue famous line. thin blue line 1988 uh uh he said uh, i know enough to do more than i did did you know enough to do more than you did about weinstein's misbehavior in those days Depends on what kind of misbehavior we're talking about. What did you know about? Harvey, um, and I have a debt, I suppose. He was the one distributor who wanted mm -hmm. to deal with the Thin Blue Line. No one else wanted to go near it. Um, but Harvey's a thug. His whole modus operandi was to tell you that he was more powerful than you. He could crush you like a bug. Um, and I'm sure that played out sexually. I'm sure it played out financially. It played out in many, many, many different ways. Was he a pleasant person to deal with? He was a monster. You were a pleasant person to deal with. Wormwood is spectacular both Thank times, you. and there'll be a third, I think, Errol Morris. Thank you very much for Thank having so me much. back. Really appreciate it, Errol Morris. Wormwood is available now on Netflix. Be sure to check it out.